Welcome back, everybody, to the Pokemon Soul Silver playthrough. This is part 55. We're gonna be moving on up to that brown-haired fellow who totally wanted me to collect 20 badges. He said it, not me. It was all him. I'm talking about 20 badges. Yep. All right. So we're gonna have Fluffer out first. Fluffer, what are you doing, rolling a rock around? Oh, you so silly. All right. So aside from Cinnabar Island being the ravaged town of the past, well, apparently this guy's ready to battle me. Weird. Man, you know, I guess, I guess he was just trying to be nice. You know, he, he wanted me to get the 20 badges, but I only got seven. He was like, hmm, close enough. So here we go, we're flying to Viridian City for the final gym of Kanto, or Kanto, Kanto. Ugh. How many times has that come up in this part of the playthrough? Like, you know, this is the, like the second half of the playthrough. Ah, Fluffer's holding, uh, hmm, I don't know, do I actually want it, if it's something from Fluffer? Oh, okay, it's just a flower, alright. You know, that being said, it's actually been a while since I've actually gotten anything from the Pokemon. They haven't held anything for quite some time. But then again, I don't think I'm talking to them as often, but oh well. Gotta move this playthrough along, you know. Now, I'm such an old school gamer, I'm so used to, um going around the right side of the gym because that was pretty much the only way that you could get to the door. Uh, fortunately, they made a gap between the trees and the left side of the, the gym so that you can just cut around through there. Anyway, so Gym Guy is totally telling me that I need to put my Pokemon away very similarly to Claire's Gym in Johto. Yeah, that one. The one with the crazy lava on the bottom. All right. So, uh, sort of like Claire's gym, this one has a crazy maze that you have to figure out. And, uh, yeah, as if, if you couldn't tell from the looks of it, it's pretty confusing. So that being said, I'm gonna, well, aside from trying to figure out how to get through the gym, I'm certainly going to be battling as many trainers as I possibly can here. Now, we're gonna be having Fluffer doing some magical stuff here. Now, the reason why I had Fluffer out was because, well, let's just say I kinda haven't played gold and silver for a pretty long time. So I forgot how the Viridian Gym works in Generation 2. Uh, I'm so used to it being, you know, a rock slash ground type gym in Generation 1 and 3. It's talking about fire, red, and leaf green. Um, but yeah, that's not the case here. Unfortunately. But hey, Fluffer's still holding his own. Oh my lord. Uh, maybe that's not such a great idea. I should probably switch out. Now, this is the first Tauros of the playthrough, but I decided to speed this part up because it just took god-awful long to deal with this Tauros and subsequent Pokemon that these Ace Trainers will have. Claire had Ace Trainers in her gym, too, and look at that crazy Tauros. He totally fainted himself with the recoil on takedown. Amazing job. Well, speaking of job, that makes my job easier. You know, doing all sorts of crazy battle and playthrough stuff. Hello, how you doing? Come here often? There's such a wonderful gym. And no, I respectfully disagree with you, lady. Salma. Salma. That reminds me of, um, um, what's her name? Um, Samara. Right, Samara from The Ring. Ugh, God. That freaky movie. Yeah, so apparently Slowking's got Flamethrower. Now, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I was kind of thinking that Fluffer could kind of tank a couple of Flamethrowers, and that simply was not the case. All right, so we got a new Pokemon coming out. The first Licky Licky of the playthrough. What an uninventive name for an ugly Pokemon. Just a very unnecessary evolution. To a, a very unpopular Pokemon in Licky Tongue. I don't think there's I don't think there's anybody that has sent me a you know a favorite memory or a favorite Pokemon that listed Licky Tongue as their favorite Pokemon. No, nobody likes Licky Tongue. Where's Pincer's evolution? <laughs> Where's Kangaskhan's evolution? You know, like give an evolution to one of like the cool Pokemon. I Nonsense, Licky Tongue. Anyway, taking care of that Licky Licky like it was nobody's busy business. Yeah, I just came up with corny stuff. That's what I do. If this is perhaps the first video you're ever watching that I have done, and you're still watching the video to this point, I make up corny jokes. It's what I do. 
It's what I do best. Oh, yeah. See, I, I noticed a very long strip of, like, a runway. And I was wondering what was going to happen at the end there. And, of course, it's a double battle, which I am so unprepared for. So unprepared to the point where my weakest two Pokemon out of every Pokemon that I have caught so far are the, ba the double battlers. Might as well run with it. Alright, so once again, this is first Porygon 2 of the playthrough, but once again, it took god-awful long to deal with these two. And I'm just gonna look away because this, this was actually, it was disappointing. It was heartbreaking, just how long this took. So I'm gonna get to a couple shoutouts in the meantime. Um, Zombies Rule Zero says, My best memory of all was when I first started watching Pokemon the cartoon slash anime. Because my mom bought me and my sister a Pokemon CD with what are now favorite episodes on it. The episodes were one about a Scyther and Electabuzz who were sworn enemies. Ah! I remember that one. That was the one where Pikachu shows his love for ketchup. Ah, that one was great. What about a Snorlax who was blocking a waterway? And one about Ash's Pikachu accidentally swallowing an apple hole and having to go to the doctor. I kind of don't remember that last, like, I kind of do remember, like, Pikachu having to go to the hospital for something. You know, I, I just, I don't remember it, like, the apple thing. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that he's lying or anything, I just don't remember. Um, but if, you know, I, I would love it if anybody knows the name of that episode, I would love for them to comment and tell me the name of the episode so I could just sort of, if not watch it, then just sort of, like, read the transcript and the synopsis of it. Uh, Crasher Around says, My most memorable Pokemon memory happens to be from Red Version, not Fire Red. I was young and had no clue about some of the concepts in the game. When I got to Lieutenant Surges, I didn't know how to cut down the tree. I hadn't been Misty yet. So I trained a lot. Let's just say I had a level 63 Hypno before I figured it out. Also, my brother traded me his Moltres for it, and I, still not fully understanding of things, accidentally let it go. Whoa. That's about as new to the game as it gets. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got one more trainer left, and there he is. I believe this guy has a really weird name. Doesn't it make you a little dizzy? It makes me want to throw up, just looking at that room. Bonita! Yeah, he did have a weird name. Like, I mean, I know I brought this up several times. What kind of a name is Bonita? You know, just the fact that, like, the beginning of his name sounds like Bone. N no! I would never want to name my child anything with the word Bone in it. Gah! Anyway, this Spinda is decided to be the most annoying little Spinda I've ever seen. Doing all sorts of annoying little tactics, and, uh, now we got Pseudo Wudo here. Who, of course, is a Pseudo- Whoa! Okay, that was a lot of damage. And, of course, he just had to have a Rock-type attack that was super effective against Fluffer. But Citizen Zap, taking care of business. Not even giving that Sudowoodo room to breathe, man. Just totally punishing him for trying to take out um, Fluffer. All right, Citizen Zap, standing up for Fluffer. She's the only one that I think actually ever would. Pokemon or human, Fluffer's weird. I'm just saying. All right, so, uh... Like, the beginning half of this video, up until, like, this very point, kind of, like, it kind of screwed up. The sound was a little off-key, because the, for some reason it recorded the sound, like, faster than the video, so it desynced, and I had to slow down the sound so that it synced up. So, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody could tell over the sound of my voice, but it was a little off-key. But now it's fine, because this was a different video that I recorded. So now everything is in-key. Yes. Uh, Alright, so, uh, getting rid of Cut on Fireball, finally, the most useless attack Fireball has ever had, and he's had it for the longest time, and now instead of giving him whatever that Fire Hyper Beam attack is, I decided to give him Overheat instead, because I like it a lot more than the Hyper Beam thing, because I don't want Fireball to have to, like, recharge for a turn, I'd rather just have him attack. All right, so enough of that nonsense. We're now battling Leader Blue, the final gym leader of the Kanto region. He's the eighth and final gym leader, and he is the former champion of Kanto three years prior, as were the 
a as were the, uh, as was the timeline of red, blue, green, fire red, and leaf green. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, not gonna, not gonna all delve into all this um, English wording and trying to find all fancy big words and such. Even though I tend to do that from time to time. Season that leveling up, nailing that executor for four times damage with a bug type attack. Executor is weak, four times weak to uh, bug type attacks because he's grass and psychic. Works out. See, like I was under the like I had Citizen Zap out first because I was under the impression that he was going to use a certain Pokemon of his that is weak to electricity. Unfortunately, he sort of changed it up on me. Not literally though, I was just misinformed. Okay, Fluffer missed, Rhydon missed, so we're back to square one. Fluffer getting that stun spore. Hopefully that Rhydon will not nail Fluffer with Stone Edge. That's gonna be devastating. Thank god it missed. It's gonna be devastating because, of course, Rhydon is port part rock type, so it's going to do stab damage. That's not gonna be so much fun. So we're gonna set up Stun Spore, Leech Seed, and I don't know if Fluffer's still gonna stay. Yes, Fluffer's still gonna stay out. He's gonna do Solar Beam. Gonna try for it. Rhydon's paralyzed. Now, as if Fluffer hasn't done this twice in the past to a Rhyhorn. It's now time for Fluffer to nail this ride on with a massive solar beam! I love that effect. It's so awesome. And is it gonna take him out in one hit? He's four times weak to it. Yes! Alright, Fluffer. Totally taking care of business. Alright. I think I think Fluffer has definitely deserved himself a rest, considering the next one up is gonna be Arcanine. Uh, might as well just use. Yeah, Mr. the Fancy, you mad. All right, you mad? Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of faith in you, mad. I know that he is insanely powerful, so every time I bring him out, I am very certain that he's going to take care of business. He's going to hand, he's going to handle his business. Yeah, get in that ring and handle your business, son. If anybody gets the reference, yeah. All right, so you mad handling business with Aqua Tail. Arcanine is very fast, so it let in with, uh, oh god, I can't even remember what it just did. Was it, oh, Dragon Pulse, yeah, I don't even know why it has a Dragon type attack. But, uh, I can only imagine that's probably the best idea for the move set that Arcanine has to use, uh, you know, Dragon Pulse. He probably has, like, some fire stuff and, like, extreme speed, so Dragon Pulse was probably the best idea here. But still not enough to take out Umad. Umad is such a powerful tank. He's got like a, like, you know, that big mouth in the front is just like a big tank cannon that just boom, you know, shoots out water cannonballs and just totally wrecks the other Pokemon that he's up against. Definitely taking my time here. Gotta decide very carefully what Pokemon to pull out next. Uh, bats and video games to deal with this Machamp. I figure why not because, well, um, Bats Video Games, aside from being very fast and having Confuse Ray, has Fly. And flying type attacks are, of course, super effective against fighting, fighting types, like Machamp. Something tells me, yeah, trouble. Great. <sighs> so not only does he not get, or, you know, hit himself in the, in the confusion, but he also happens to have Stone Edge. And I made a very critical mistake here. I did not know that Stone Edge could hit a Pokemon while it's flying. Wow, just rub salt in the wound with a critical hit. Thanks, jerk. Well, you know what? That, that pretty much pissed me off, so you know what? Fireball, go get him! It's time for this friggin' Machamp to taste the heat. The overheat! Nail him with the new attack! Overheat got massive damage, but after you use it, the user's special attack goes down two stages. Machamp's still confused, and of course he still has Stone Edge, which definitely gives him the edge over Fireball. Not really liking where this is going, but you know what? I'm such a, I'm such a big time risk taker. Now, I was thinking about switching out, and I said, you know what? Forget it. I might as well just be the risk taker and the daredevil that I am, and use another overheat. 
Anytime soon! You totally ruined the moment, me, in the past. Hurry the frig up! Thank you! Wow, that just... You know, I thought I did it faster than that, but I guess I was really thinking about it, because, you know, it is a calculated risk. But hey, Fireball still got it done. Even with two uh, special attack stages lower, Overheat nailed that Machamp. Took him out. Ugh. Blue is such a frustrating bowl of frustration. He's got all sorts of different types of Pokemon, but that's to be expected because he used to be the champion. He doesn't follow the rules. He makes them. He's Gary Mother Flippin' Oak. Okay? He does what he wants. He's even more badass than, um, than Seto Kaiba, who has rules and screws. I'm... Wow, I ruined that. I completely ruined that. See, I was on a roll there, and I messed up. Who has money and says, screw the rules. There we go. I made up for it. All right, so once again, taking a big risk here. Now, Gyarados is doing Waterfall, and it's doing some serious damage. I don't really like where this is going. I'm pretty sure Citizen Zap can take one more hit, and of course, it's a critical. Wow. All right. So, uh, I figure, why not? You know, he's got himself a U-Mad. I'll bring out my U-Mad and intimidate that foe. Do some fancy ice fanging. Now, he's got Dragon Dance, so, you know, I had Dragon Dance as well. And I was thinking, you know, he's using Dragon Dance. He's really buffing himself up. I should probably get this done as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, it wasn't going as quickly as I would have hoped. Yeah, that ice fang, I thought would be super effective but I sort of forgot that water is resistant to ice. Yeah. You know, he is part flying, but then again, he's part water. And look, he has ice fang too. Wow. He's doing this on purpose. He's rubbing salt in the wound. I like where this is going though. This, this is awesome though. You know, I, I'm loving this battle because, you know, I definitely had the advantage going into, you know, in the very beginning, now he's making a comeback with nothing more than his friggin' Gyarados. Four times effective with Ice Fang on Fluffer. That's not, yeah. Fluffer don't like that. <sighs> he doesn't like the cold showers, okay? I don't really think Red Ranger is gonna be able to, to do much here, but I decided to use uh, Red Ranger as, well, sort of bait. Use one of my fancy max revives that I have not ever used throughout the entire playthrough and revive Citizen Zap, who is most certainly going to deal with this Gyarados problem like nobody's business. Once again, four times effective against, I think, four times effective against Rain Red Ranger. I'm pretty sure that bug types are weak against ice. But nevertheless, Red Ranger still managed to survive one hit. Got Citizen Zap. I really hope he does. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I really hope he does Ice Fang again, you know? Do all sorts of nonsense. That was a lot of damage. Taking another calculated risk with Thunder. Is it calculated or is it risky risk? It paid off. Thunder. Ah, oh, thank God. That's it for that, Gyarados. Woo! Man, that was... That, that really got close there. I mean, he's got one Pokemon left, and that was the one Pokemon that I thought he was going to send out first, which is why I had Citizen Zap out in front. Unprepared for this. I don't think so, because you're down to your last Pokemon. So, if anything, I'd say I'm pretty gosh darn prepared. A lot of his Pokemon and, and the Pokemon in the gym have returned, and that's it. That is going to be the end of this battle. Yep. It, that was... Pr I loved how back and forth that was. That was awesome. That was a great battle. That, that was probably the best gym leader battle ever in the entire playthrough. That was really close. He, he, he almost had me. You know, I was down to Red Ranger and Fireball. If I sent out Fireball, he was just going to do Waterfall. And that was just going to be... That would have been very unpleasant. Because, and I stick by this assertion saying that Fireball has not fainted once in the entire playthrough. But I think that one or two people said that, oh, yeah, he did fade a uh, long time ago. Pretty sure he didn't. I'm just going to stick with that. Fireball's never fainted this entire playthrough. Prove me wrong. All right. So with that, the, 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 the defeat of Gym Leader Blue, we have now got the Earth Badge, which is the final 
eighth badge of the Kanto region. And with that in mind, we are done with the entirety of the Kanto region. There's really nothing else left to do. Aw, oh, brought tears to his eyes. Sniff, sniff. And uh, now it's uh, evening time. I like that. Professor Oak. Alright. I certainly am working hard. Did you see that that totally awesome defeat of your grandson that I totally pulled off? Yeah, you so did, somehow. Anyway, so he's got something fancy to give me back in Pallet Town. So I'm gonna go over there and uh, see what he wants. Well, not anytime soon. Well, not anytime soon in this part of the playthrough, I should say. Because that's it for this part of the Pokemon Soul Silver playthrough. Join me in part 56, where hopefully Citizen Zap, she will find whatever it is that she was restlessly looking for. I Someone commented and said I accidentally called Citizen Zap a he a couple parts back. Whoops. Oh, no. See you all next time.